Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous springtime Monday morning here in the end times, in the paradise of East Bumblefuck, New Mexico. And uh, as much as I need to be outside weeding my collard grains, I need to bring you my uh, weekly economic meltdown roundup rant. But before I get to that, I just want to dip into my mailbag uh, to look at some of the comments that I have received from my video. I posted this video about the, the brewing fight between Paul climatologist Paul Beckwith and... Uh, biologist Guy McPherson, which I, I think I titled The Apocaloptimist versus the Doomers. <coughs> Good Lord, that was what, about 22 hours ago. Um, all right, little dog, can you move aside here, please? And I noticed, so I get up this morning and notice I have 946 views and 200. 53 comments. I This video has received more comments probably probably than about every other video I have made in the year 2017 combined would be my guess. I must have struck a nerve. So anyway, I just want to share three of these comments. Just um, proud to see that not everybody out there on the planet is a clueless moron. Uh, so I'm just going to share three of these and say hats off to these commenters. The first one from a fellow, I don't think, at least I don't recognize that he's ever commented on one of my videos before. This is Robert Lloyd weighing in on the, on the <coughs> fight between the Apocaloptimist and the Doomers. Robert Lloyd. <coughs> I live in Pittsburgh and have worn shorts to work off and on all winter. I've never seen anything remotely close to these temperatures over winter. If the summer is this much above normal, that's a scary thought. Anything is possible. We are in uncharted territory. But what is probable? More of the same, I suspect. Increased droughts, more fires, higher temperatures, more extinctions, more destructive storm events, more people without food and water, more wars over resources, more civil unrest, more financial meltdowns, more author authoritarian governments, more destruction of terrestrial ecosystems and aquatic eco ecosystems, until we hit that point where we have literally destroyed our life support systems beyond repair. No one can know when and where in time that point resides. It could be we are at the top of that bell curve right now. <coughs> Maybe we will hit the peak in 50 years. No one knows. But the direction we are headed is obviously disastrous. Thank you, Robert. <clears throat> From Robert to Alert Tribes member Lucky Blank, Lucky Blank, weighing in on this, <clears throat> on this debate. One, Neither, neither gentleman, meaning Paul Beckwith or uh, <clears throat> Guy McPherson, has an approach that is so far helping humanity fix its impact problem. I'm just going to interrupt uh, Lucky Blank right here as I mentioned in my response to him. Well, Guy McPherson has done one thing, and that was his decision not to breed which is the one and only thing uh, at this point that any of us can do to help humanity fix its impact problem is to stop bringing more goddamn humans onto this planet. Anyway, sorry, Lucky Blank, I decided this, this is your rant, not mine. Okay. <clears throat> Two, 
neither gentleman knows what the tipping points are, when they might occur, or if they if there are any in an interconnected system like Earth's. Number three, neither do any of us. Number four, ethically, we do have a duty to circumscribe humanity's so far massively negative impact on the ability of the Earth to sustain life. So Guy is wrong if he's saying, just love yourself and others and keep traveling. But is he saying that? Number five, Paul is right to say we're not all dead yet, so we should be doing a lot more. But by himself, he doesn't have a ghost of a chance to change civilization's course, or at least he hasn't yet demonstrated a cause for such apocaloptimism. <clears throat> Number six, the timetable for our species is irrelevant. If by our sheer momentum and inertia are unable to prevent ecological collapse. Number seven, humanity cannot survive ecological collapse, as Hambone rightly emphasizes. <clears throat> Number eight, I am completely done worrying about cognitive dissonance until and unless mass humanity either vanishes or turns away from the path we are on, we are all not just fucked, but completely 100% responsible for fucking the planet beyond recognition or survivability. Coming to the planet's aid is a moral imperative for every human being, regardless of contravening reproduction, optimism, or life goals. Number nine, throwing ourselves under a bus to save the planet might not look appealing, but we've already lit America on fire by electing Donald Trump. So I would say we're more suicidal than we thought. And might some of us <clears throat> not make that count? Number 10, lone voices in the wilderness being irrelevant, perhaps some kind of extinction summit focused not on humanity, but other species might help drill down to the solutions we know are needed, such as, but not limited to, what is on climatemanifesto.com. And uh, so he puts a link to the climatemanifesto.com, which I might come back and visit on Wednesday. But I want to read one more comment. Now, I'm a little unclear. Pukalu sent me this comment from his Facebook page. So I'm not sure that this is a response to my actual video. That was, I'm a little unclear on this, Pukalu. But anyway, it's about the subject of, uh, of the Paul Beckwith uh, Guy McPherson spat. And this is from one of uh, Pukalu's Facebook friends named Craig Lacasse weighing in on this. Take it away, Craig. Quote, I agree with Beckwith in that near-term extinction, while possible as a result of nuclear war, is not likely to happen because of abrupt climate change. Scientists from the Stockholm Resilience Center took a snapshot of human impacts on the biosphere at present, and there are three ecological problems right now that are more severe than climate change. Thank you very much. You know, how many times have I said that we don't even need climate change to bring down this planet? 
even if climate change did not was not a problem on this planet, uh, let Craig spell it out for you. Okay, in the Stockholm Resilience Center. Okay, number one would be biosphere integrity, aka diversity of species, biogeochemical flows, such as the nitrogen and phosphorus cycles, and land system change, otherwise known as habitat destroyers, such as deforestation. Climate change is a huge problem, for sure, and promises to be the sledgehammer that will complete the process of making the planet uninhabitable for humans. <clears throat> There are a fair amount of intelligent voices and good approaches to, ad to address these crises, our planetary crisis, but they don't have the geopolitical power to stop those who have concentrated their wealth and power in such a way as to profit from ecocide. Some talk of revolution, but if successful, could still it could still result in the concentration of wealth and power shifted to a different set of people. Furthermore, the weapons and intelligence that exist today are formidable, and the destruction from such a war would exacerbate ecological degradation. The path to human survival seems likely to be a retreat of a few to the last wild places, learning how to survive, hoping that the system of domination collapses under its own pressure, which is exactly where the system is heading. As we have learned from recent history, climate change brings largely negative surprises at an accelerating pace. Almost yearly now, we should not take lightly the doomsday clock being advanced to two and a half minutes before midnight or the upper estimate of 2100 being advanced to more than 7 degrees Celsius. Combined with the aforementioned crises, I think it's more likely the 22nd century will be our last. I disagree with those who think the industrial problem calls for industrial solutions. The problem is rooted in domestication and civilization. Practically all modern humans are cognitively ill-equipped unwilling and physically unable to do what is necessary to regenerate the biosphere. So, currently, I think the situation is hopeless. If our species can somehow escape the sixth mass extinction event, it will largely be because we lucked out. Yes. And uh, so there you go. Out of 253 comments, those are my top three, but there's plenty more on there. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to wrap up my little sojourn into my mailbag about yesterday's rant and move on to today's economic meltdown roundup rant where I'm heading over to the mainstream media, the alternative media, and YouTube for about 21 uh, examples of how the global industrial economy is bringing down this planet while the apocalyptimist and doomers jabber on. Coming Right up. Bye, guys.